What's up y'all, I hope everyone is having a great day. I'm Anthony, on today's video, I got a more serious topic I wanted to discuss. One that I've been trying to hit for quite a while now, but I just really haven't, I really hadn't had an idea of where I wanted to go with it, but I just need to go ahead and do it because it's something that is near and dear to me. So today we're gonna to talk about reasons why I do not fully trust the United States food supply system. So let's go. So right today we're going to be talking about five reasons why I do not fully trust our food supply system in this country. Now I could probably talk about this subject for about two hours at minimum if I really wanted to, but I'm going to try to put it down into something that we can all watch and uh, keep it somewhat interesting and not too dry. So I'm going to keep it to five of my main topics. Now if you've been a subscriber to this channel for any length of time, you understand that food and growing my own food, sourcing my own food, is one of my absolute favorite topics to discuss. So this should come as no surprise to some of these topics, but if you are new to the channel, you are going to see exactly why I try my best to be as 100% food self-sufficient as I can. Okay, so number one, the main reason why I decided to get into this lifestyle to begin with, the whole reason why I do this whole self-reliance thing is because I do not trust our meat supply system because there are four packing or producing, I'm sorry, uh, processing plants in this country that run 85% of the meat in the United States. Those four corporations are as follows. You have Cargill, Tyson Foods, JBS, and National Beef. My biggest issue is the fact that two of the four companies aren't even owned by the United States companies. They're owned by Brazil. JBS is a subsidiary of JBS, what, SA from Brazil, and National Beef is a is actually been bought out by uh, the Brazilian company Marfrig. So those two companies aren't even owned by the United States, yet they run that much of the meat industry. So that leads me into my biggest issue with it. The United States is the number one beef producer in the world yet we are the number one importer of beef and the number two exporter of beef. Now think about that. We are the number one producer of beef, yet we import the most beef and we export the second most beef. How is that possible? How does that make any sense whatsoever? If we are the number one producer, why are we importing beef at all? And if we have enough to be the number two exporter, that is for sure why we should be not importing beef. So that means that there's some silly business going on, and I think I can understand why if you just follow my train of thought here. The United States beef supply and meat supply for that matter, all our slaughterhouses and stuff are guaranteed inspected by USDA. How good that inspection is, is, is for you to decide, but we are USDA inspected in this country. You have to be. And the FDA also has so many other rules and you have local health jurisdictions and all kinds of stuff. So there's a whole bunch of regulatory issues, or not issues, but regulatory eyes on our meat industry. That doesn't happen globally. So you have countries like, let's say China, for example, they bought Smithfield pork products, right? You know, Smithfield, you can buy bacon, hams, all that stuff. Well, China bought them out years ago. And they said the reason why they bought them is because they wanted to get a very safe, good supplier of pork for China because they didn't trust Chinese companies to produce pork safely because there's been so many issues, especially with swine flu. So they wanted to buy an American company because they knew that we had a whole bunch of safeguards and all this stuff put in place. So they trust our regulatory process. So China bought out Smithfield and is exporting our pork products back to them. They're importing our pork products. So if we're getting pork, do you think it's actually U.S. pork? Or are we importing from China the stuff they didn't want to eat? That's my issue. That's what makes me get kind of like, hmm, this doesn't really make a lot of sense. Now, luckily for beef, the main producers of beef in the world are the U.S., Canada, Australia, and Brazil. So there's not really any kind of like shady country business here. Uh, but, you know, obviously places like the U.K. in the 80s had mad cow disease issues. So you got to wonder if that's one of the reasons. If they're using the regulatory process that we have for exports while importing for us questionable meat elsewhere because they don't have to worry about those regulations if they get it from another country. So it is precisely that reason why I really don't trust our food supply. So that's why whenever it comes to me getting my meats, especially red meat, yeah, I'll buy beef here and there, but for the most part, most of my red meat, I get from hunting deer back here. Truthfully, honestly, if I'm gonna eat red meat, I'm gonna get it from deer out here or from cattle I've seen out in the field and I try to talk directly to a farmer. 
Knowing what I know about how corporations are run, how tax sheltered and all that good stuff, it makes me wonder exactly how safe everything is if they're able to bypass a lot of inspections on imported stuff, but we have to do so much in inspections for exported stuff. Not to mention the whole tariff game. So I just don't agree with any of the stuff that they're doing and that's why it makes my number one. Now that brings me to number two. The second thing I really don't trust about our food supply. The fact that whole nutritious foods Whole foods that you literally pick in the field and deliver directly to the grocery store costs more than processed foods you might be able to pick out of the freezer at a grocery store or in a box. Explain that one to me and I can give you an example, okay? Uh, I went to the grocery store recently, you know, simple regular grocery store and a head of broccoli, a big head of broccoli cost about $2.50. Okay, it was like two or one nine nine a pound. I, I picked one up and it was decent size, so it was like two fifty. Okay, how does that cost two dollars and fifty cents when literally all it is is cut from the field and brought to the store? And I can go into the frozen food section and get buy one get one broccoli and cheese slathered together for a dollar ninety nine. How does that work? How do you have that much more processes input in there? and you're adding fake cheese and you're adding all the you know fuel back and forth from those you know places of business that actually make all that stuff and it's cheaper than the nutritional whole food that you might get out of the produce section that never computes to me i don't understand that same principle when you go to fast food how does the salad cost you know eight nine dollars and you can get like buy two burgers for three dollars that doesn't make sense to me either so the fact of the matter is with the way our regulatory system is set up and the way that things are kind of moving, where they're going, it's like things that they can do to the food that they should never have had the opportunity to do to the food get bypassed anyway for processed crap. Because again, they can import it and bypass the entire regulatory process. And all they got to do is inspect it upon import and trust the other companies or countries to do that uh, versus having to go through our own food supply. So that same head of broccoli that cost a U.S. farmer, he got paid, the farmer maybe got paid nine cents for the head of broccoli. The grocery store can charge a decent amount versus being able to import from some other country where we have no idea what the conditions it was grown in and they can get it for even cheaper. That just doesn't make sense to me and that's what I don't like. So I'll reiterate, there should be no reason why if you wanna to try to eat somewhat healthy in this country, why it costs so much to do so. And that leads me to number three. It's a perfect segue actually. The number three reason why I don't really trust our food supply is the fact that there's always some sort of recall going on, like a lot of recalls. As a matter of fact, in the last two months, I put together all the headlines that I've seen in this little clip right here. All that can kind of fall back on the second point as to why whole foods cost more than processed foods because there's no cooking involved and since there's no cooking involved you have to really watch out how your hands are washed and how the supply system runs and the water quality because you can't just dump crap water from livestock on these fields because then you're going to start putting things like E. coli in the lettuce. We don't cook lettuce so obviously that E. coli would be going directly into someone's mouth because it's not being cooked and that's why there's so many recalls especially towards like greens and stuff like that. So I really don't blame anyone these days if they don't eat raw vegetables especially when they go to like a, a fast food joint that puts lettuce and tomato on things because let's be honest here look at that look at the recall list that's just from the last two months and it's constantly that big every single year all the time that's one of the reasons why i grow my own vegetables because i don't trust things i can't cook the perfect time to talk about one of the solutions that i hear all the time and it brings up my number four reason why organics the organic industry alone has been a multi-billion dollar industry for a reason. When organic label and all the organics came about in like the early 2010s, that's when you really started seeing the USDA organic label being put on things, that started to show up as a result of people not trusting the food supply. So they wanted to be able to, to trust a farmer who's been certified organic. Hey, this food is not sprayed to death with pesticides and herbicides and all this other stuff that's gonna cause me harm. That was the entire principle of it. And that's why you saw a whole bunch of these companies popping up left and right, because they wanted to at least be an option for people out there to be able to buy quality food for their families. Well, have you paid attention lately to all those organic brands to see if they're still the same idea and design they were when they came out? Because odds are they're not. All of these companies that start out with really good intentions, these organics, these nice, uh, you know, 
whole food companies have been systematically being bought out by other corporations. Now I have a list here of companies that start out with really good intentions but were absorbed or bought into these major corporations so they're not, you don't really have an idea and we don't know for sure if it's the exact same principle as when the company started. A lot of y'all know Bragg's, Bragg's apple cider vinegar. Well that was bought out in 2019 to an investment company that was basically ran by Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom. Do you really trust that? Because I know I don't. Uh, same thing with Burt's Bees back in 2007. It was sold to Clorox. The whole reason Burt's Bees existed is because people wanted to stop putting poison on their lips and Clorox bought it. Go figure. Uh, let's see. Kellogg's was, they bought Kashi, Kashi cereal, the organic cereal. Well, they bought that back in 2000. Um, how many of y'all know Stonyfield Organic? You know, the, with the yogurts and stuff like that? Well, they sold 85% of the company to a French conglomerate in 2003. Pepsi Cola bought Naked Foods in 2006 and Honest Tea. Remember how Honest Tea came out? It was like, we're not going to put any of this crap in our tea. Well, Coca Cola bought that out in 2011. So, a lot of these companies, they start out with really good intentions, but when it came down to either the regulatory process, just trying to compete, they can't compete as fast and as well as a lot of these major established corporations. So, when a, a, new, regula a new regulation comes out from, say, the government, that's probably been lobbied by those corporations to include this new regulation, these smaller companies, it takes a bigger chunk out of their profit, a lot of their operating abilities. So they have to unfortunately raise prices more than the other competition. Well, when those prices go up, people can't afford to buy that stuff. They're gonna go buy the, the cheaper version. Well, that cheaper version is still making their regular profit margin because they can absorb the cost of that regulatory issue. All of a sudden, that company that started out with good intentions, organic, people aren't buying their stuff, they're losing money to the point where they're not making nearly enough money they want to, and they get pressured to either sell or they go out of business altogether. So that's what we're seeing a lot of. A lot of these companies that started out from the organic wave in the early 2010s have been bought out by a lot of these big companies because those big companies lobby Congress to pass a lot of regulations that these companies just cannot do. They cannot absorb and deal with, so they have to sell. And that's what we're seeing. So the organic label used to mean a lot back in, say, 2012. Now there's so many cutouts and uh, you don't have to be organic or you can be 95% organic and this is, you know, technically organic, but it's really not. A whole bunch of, like, what ifs and things you don't absolutely have to have to be able to use that label that it really doesn't mean as what you think it does these days. And that's going to bring me to number five. The number five reason why I don't trust our food supply. Out of all the things that I've mentioned already in this video, I'm sure a lot of people are probably struggling to think of ways or better options to maybe find real food. And one of the first things that comes to a lot of people's minds is farmer's markets, okay? At least I can go to a farmer's market to know that I'm getting good quality food. Not always, let me explain why. Because a lot of times you're gonna see people, it's become the new scam actually nowadays, and I've seen it here actually, uh, where you, you have a couple family farms that go to the farmer's markets doing exactly what farmer markets are supposed to be doing. And then you have a group, three, four, five, however many people coming from, let's say, uh, the wholesale market from US Foods or Dole or something like that, and they're being able to buy literal not organic produce take all the stickers off, ship it over to the farmer's market and act like they grew it, okay? A lot of these farmer's markets don't have the scrutiny. They don't have people going to inspect the farm that this food's coming from. They kind of have to go on like an honor system. So maybe even some of these people have that inspection, but they still go ahead and maybe get one or two things that they'll go to make some money on because they know that when they're at a farmer's market, they can charge more money than they would at a grocery store. So they can charge more money. Why would it not make sense for them to be able to go to those wholesale wholesalers using your little permit that you have, go buy wholesale fruits for resale, and then mark them up that extra two or three dollars per because you're selling supposedly organic, but you're not really saying it's organic, you're just saying it's from your farm, so people will imply that it's organic, and you're able to get a lot more money. So that's what we've seen here, especially in my area. Uh, I've seen people, this actually is kind of sad actually, uh, one of the local highways here, there's a tractor who pulls behind a cart to make it look like he just picked all this food out of his field prior to showing up to sell at this little offside the road farmer's market thing. Well, if you look, it's like March, April, and he's already selling things like watermelon and squash. Now I get it. There are certain things that you can sell uh, that you can produce to sell in March and April in things like greenhouses, but there's no greenhouses that large for things like watermelon in March and April. 
We're not stupid. I'm sure a lot of people are just ignorant, they don't know, but there's a lot of things that just doesn't make sense. Apple trees, for that matter. How are you selling apples at a roadside farmer's market in June, May? Apples don't ripen at the earliest until the end of July, early August. Again, at the earliest. Most apples don't start coming down until September, October. So if you see someone selling apples in March or April, they're either old apples or they're apples from the Southern Hemisphere. And that's the whole point I'm talking about. A lot of people don't know, so they trust farmer's markets. They spend top dollar and they're buying things that aren't even from a farmer locally. Now I'm pretty sure I've gotten about 95% of y'all to be like, okay, so what do I do? There's really nothing I can do. I'm kind of stuck with eating crap food and I just have to deal with it. Well, that's not the whole intention of this video. The intention of this video is to at least bring it to your attention, okay? Because there's a lot of people out there who are fooled by bright, colorful, farm-like looking labels to make it look like they came from the most amazingly healthy source possible. And a lot of times that nice organic healthy food that you want to get does not look perfect, okay? So when you do go to an organic farmer's market or you have a friend who's selling the stuff or you have, you're growing it yourself, you're gonna realize pretty quickly that the food that you may eat, especially when it comes to produce like uh, fruits and vegetables, they don't really look pretty, okay? So a lot of times when you go to the grocery store and you see those nice shiny apples, that's not how they come off the tree, okay? They come off the tree looking sometimes even really scraggly, but they just don't look perfect. And a lot of times that's the issue with America. We have a problem with how our food looks. If it doesn't look perfect, perfect, we won't eat it. The amount of food waste in general from grocery stores not taking products from farmers because it doesn't look a certain way is astonishing. If you actually dig a little deeper than normal like surface level to actually see how much waste is coming from these American farms because grocery stores will not buy something that does not look perfect, you'll be amazed at exactly how much we are throwing away or turning into compost regularly. And that's been my biggest issue from the get, okay? So when it comes to solutions on how we can achieve uh, wholesome food, be able to get quality food, you got to at least identify the problem. And that's the whole point of this video. I'm trying to identify the problem and what the problem is with the industry. So maybe since we know what the issues are, we can come up with solutions. And that's where my channel comes into play. Yes, a little bit of uh, self appreciation here, a little bit of uh, uh, advertising for myself. But yeah, you know, when it comes to what I do, what I've been doing on this channel for years, I've been showing you how to grow your own food, how to source your own food in the most efficient way possible. I know that not everybody can have a ginormous garden. Not everybody wants to go out hunting or having their own livestock, farm animals, that kind of thing. I know that's not possible for a lot of people. But the idea is to at least be able to identify how to do it if you need to. And if you have a space to maybe grow a uh, five by 10 garden, then do so because when you actually do it for the first time and you see how food is supposed to taste versus the crap you buy from the store, you'll understand why people are being pushed into cities, people are being pushed into these uh, neighborhoods that are really close with no yards at all because they really don't want you eating whole foods anymore. I know that sounds like big conspiracy, whatever, but I mean, what's the other answer? What's the reason why they don't want us eating whole foods? Is it to make us sicker? Is it so we can uh, spend more money on big pharma? And that's what it looks like. I can't tell you that's gonna be the exact reason, but that's what it looks like. So there's just a whole bunch of options out there. You just have to kind of break away from the norm. When I say break away from the norm is, I'm saying you might have to grow your own food. You might have to partner with somebody you know who has land, maybe get a co-op, form a co-op. Uh, that means where you can uh, get a whole bunch of your neighbors together to go down to the local farm and say, hey, we'll give you the, this amount of money if you can set aside this land so we can grow some food. I know people that'll do that. I've seen neighborhood co-ops where they have like the one empty lot, they turn into a farm area uh, or a growing area so they can grow their own vegetables. Like this stuff isn't crazy, but you just gotta think outside the box here. As for me, some of the things that I've been able to do for my family to at least try to take out some of the sting of going and buying stuff from the store and like not having to be able to trust a lot of these places, I don't eat out very much anymore. Uh, definitely don't eat a lot of fast food because you don't know what's actually in that stuff. Um, I try to get as much whole ingredients as possible and try to make this stuff at home. At least I know what's kind of going in things. So yeah, I might still be buying things from a store, but at least I'm putting those together. I don't have to worry about that 
laundry list of preservatives that are added to these boxed foods, these boxed dinners, frozen, things like that. Another thing that I've been doing is I've been obviously hunting. Like you've seen in my videos before, I obviously like to hunt, hunt turkey, hunt deer, squirrel, that kind of thing. So that's able to give me a good quality source of meat that I can stash away myself. I also do a lot of fishing, so I have good quality fish that I can put in my freezer and feed my family. Now, one of my biggest wants when I moved out to the property that I live in now is I wanted to be able to grow most of my own fruits. I know how expensive it is trying to grow your own fruits. And yes, I know there are certain things that you can't grow in my climate. I'll never be able to grow citrus or pineapples, things like that. But I never really ate that much stuff to begin with. Okay, yeah, I like eating oranges every now and then, but it's never been like my mainstay. Main fruits I really like are berries, apples, pears, peaches. And guess what? I can grow that stuff. I do grow that stuff. I have apple trees, I have pear trees. I have that those things out here planted planted and I planted them early so I could have them producing now. So the point now where I never buy blueberries or strawberries. I don't have to because I grow my own. And that's where it's nice because I don't have to worry about trusting the recalls and all that other crap from these companies, who touched what, who washed what, and I don't have to worry about buying something at a store. I've had it in my house for one day and it's already molding and going bad because it sat at the grocery store chain distribution center for a week. I don't have to worry about that. You know how frustrating it is when you buy potatoes and you realize that when you get home, they're already starting to grow eyes. And if you've ever grown potatoes yourself, you know that it takes like three to four months for a lot of potatoes to start growing eyes. So those potatoes are three to four months old by the time you get them. You know how frustrating that is? Of course you do. That's probably why you're watching this video. So I think I've gotten the main points I really wanted to talk about and discuss with this video out of the way. There are like 10 other things that I dislike about our food system, but those are, are more minor compared to things that I just mentioned. But uh, if you have any of the ones that you might, can think of, some that really bothers you, go ahead and put it down below in the comments because I probably agree with you uh, when it comes down to a lot of these issues with our food supply. It shouldn't be like this, and I don't know why uh, we allow it to happen, okay? As consumers, as people buying this stuff, we should have the ultimate power. But a lot of times they, they hide behind these veils of secrecy so you don't actually know what's going on unless you dig and dig and dig. And then you're able to see, wow, they're pulling a switcheroo on us. And I don't like that. So uh, if I could get anything through with this video is try to at least identify the problems and offer some solutions. If you just watch my channel and see some of the things that I'm able to grow and source for myself, maybe it'll give you an idea if I can try this or maybe I can do that and make something for myself or my family because that one meal a week will eventually morph into three meals a week and all of a sudden your family is losing weight feeling better not having to be on so many medications that kind of thing and that's the whole purpose of why i wanted to do this video so with all that being said if you learned anything at all from this video please do me a humongous favor and give this video a thumbs up i would very much appreciate it subscribe to the channel if you are not and i will catch y'all later okay